Hey guys, welcome to part six of DIY LED Basics. And this is the final part in which we'll be covering optics and dimming. This is how you put the horsepower to the ground. This is the wheels and tire setup if we're using the car analogy. And we're gonna be covering a few different types of optics um, and a few different types of dimmers. Um, first, we'll cover the King Bright 100 millimeter 80 degree lenses. It's a glass lens with a neoprene seal and a metal collar for mounting. We'll also cover the little Angelina plastic reflector. It's a 90 degree reflector. Um, we'll cover this K Todd reflector. It's a metal reflector. It's kind of attractive. Um, so we'll take a look at that. And then finally we'll cover a silicon lens as well. And just take a look at the spread and I'll talk a little bit about the advantages and disadvantages there. We're also gonna cover dimming in this video. So we'll cover the Steve's LED PWM uh, Typhon controller for the B version mean wheel drivers. We'll cover some simple dimming potentiometers. Um, we will not cover the Arduino dimming in this video because it's going to be a little bit beyond the scope. But um, if you want to subscribe and you want to learn about some cool integrating Arduino into the grow room type of applications, go ahead and subscribe. Um, I'll teach you guys how to use Arduinos to dim these LEDs and to do some other really cool control stuff in a future series. The first optic we're going to be taking a look at is the 100 millimeter diameter 80 degree beam angle lens from King Bright. It's made of a low iron glass and it weighs about 285 grams each, which is one of the big disadvantages to using these glass lenses if you're using a multi cob setup. When you have 32 of these hanging up in your room like I do, you can quickly add about 20 pounds to the weight of the build. So to check out these optics, I have a CXA 3070 4000 Kelvin run at 900 milliamps and we'll throw all the different optics on it and we'll trace out what their light emission pattern is on a piece of white paper. You can see that the glass lens has a nice even beam angle and it seems to spread the light out really well. It's an 80 degree lens, but it seems to have a much wider spread than that. Now let's take a look at the Lettle Angelina 90 degree reflector. This is a pretty inexpensive plastic reflector, so you're going to save a lot on weight. These have come down in price tremendously, but you're still going to have to use an adapter if you're using the ideal cob holders. If you want like an all-in-one solution, check out the BJB cob holders on Pacific Light Concepts. It's just about the only place that I can find small quantities, and this reflector will fit right on that cob holder, reducing the need to drill extra holes and reducing additional parts. This thing actually emits a beam angle slightly less than the 80 degree King, King Bright lens, even though this says it's a 90 degree reflector. So I'll trace that all out on this piece of white paper. And at the end, we'll take a look at how all these different optics stack up. Next up, I want to look at these silicon lenses and include them in the video because they are an option. They're lighter weight than glass, and if you have high-grade silicon, you might have better light transmittance than glass. But I'll tell you, this one by k -Tod is a little bit of a pain in the ass. It has no wireless options, and you have to drill and tap four screws for mounting it. It's expensive at $12 to $14, and lining up the cob underneath this thing is a real pain in the ass. But I did want to include it so we can check out its beam angle and see how it compares to some of the other options. I also wanted to include this k metal looking reflector. It's actually plastic with a metal coating. And I don't think you really gain anything by that metal coating. The white matte plastic does just as good as, of a job. This is their widest angle reflector that they offer. And you can see it's by far the narrowest of all the options tested. I like k products from a look standpoint, but now that I've got my hands on some and I'm testing them out, they're really just not that elegant of a product offering. Again, you have to swap, you have to solder to the cob and then you have to try to line the cob holder up to the LED and get the wires to come out the other side. It's just a real pain in the ass. I would recommend against it. But if you're looking for something that looks cool, that has a pretty tight beam angle and it's just different from what everybody else has, it might be a good option for you. So here's how everything kind of stacked up. You can see the lime green line is just the bare cob, the bare LED, and it emits light at like 150, 160 degrees. So it throws light all over the place. The King Bright lens, even though it says it's an 80 degree, seems to have sort of the widest spread, uh, followed by the k -Tod. Then the little Angelina is a little tighter. The tightest beam angle tested was the little super wide. I think the little Angelina for my choice and my money is probably going to be your best balance of cost, weight, and spread. And it's the reflector that I'm going to recommend. Although the King Bright lenses or any glass lens has the advantage of protecting the cob from water, moisture, and dust. Now let's get into talking about some dimming. 
You remember this little setup from the last video. It's just five cobs that are wired up in series to a single mean weld driver. And what we're going to do is take a look at the B version driver because that has the external dimming lead. And I'll show you a couple different ways to set that up to dim. So everything's pre-wired to basically fire up the cobs at 100%, but we got this dimming lead with a blue wire and a white wire. So the first method I'm going to show you is just a simple potentiometer, but this time I'm going to hook it up to a multimeter so that you guys can see what's actually happening. So here I have the positive side of the multimeter connected to the blue wire and the negative side connected to the white wire or the ground. And I'm going to fire this thing up and we're going to see basically what happens to the voltage. This blue wire is basically a 0 to 10 volt dimming lead. So it's, it's putting 10 volts across this multimeter. When you reduce that 10 volts down to 0, you get 0 output from the cobs. And that's all dimming is with these. It's just regulating the voltage across these two dimming wires from the positive to the ground to regulate the output of the LEDs. So let's look at a couple different ways we can regulate that voltage. So the first way is through a simple potentiometer. If you have one driver, you'll need a 100K potentiometer. You simply connect the positive or blue wire to the center pin and the black or ground wire to the left pin, leaving the far right pin open if you're looking at the knob. So with the driver off, we have obviously zero voltage at the dimming lead. As soon as it fires up, you can see here I have the dimmer about halfway down, so it's only letting about half of that 10 volts through, and so the cobs are only running at about half or 40% strength. So as I move in to adjust this potentiometer, take a look at the multimeter and take a look at the brightness of the cob and see what happens. As I turn this thing down from halfway down to 30%, 20%, 10%, and then almost to zero, you notice that the cob dims. The more voltage you send to ground through the potentiometer, the dimmer the LEDs get. And if you leave the leads wide open, you get 100 or sometimes even 100, 105% of the driver. So it's just that simple. It's just a method of voltage regulation to dim the cobs. Again, keep your eye on the multimeter as I remove the lead from the potentiometer altogether. We get full brightness once again. I'm showing you guys this method just to demonstrate that almost any way you can think of of limiting voltage will reduce the output to the LEDs. So this is what's called a voltage divider. It's just two of the same resistor wired in series. I have a little switch in there so that I can quickly toggle between 100% power and 80% power, or depending on what resistors you choose, you could have a 50% switch. So if you're seeing some problems with the plants and you don't wanna go uh, turning a bunch of knobs, you could simply have a switch that immediately turns it to 50% power. Um, and I'll show that on the multimeter here. So with the switch in the off position, this is basically simulating like the leads are not connected to anything at all. You can see we're getting our 9 volts. It should be almost 10 if I had a little better multimeter. So you can see as I reach up to hit the switch, we dim down from 100% power down to about 80 or 85% power. So I just wanted to show that to you guys for the people out there that may want a simple switch that will dim you to a specific output percentage. So now let's move into some of the fun stuff, which is the PWM or pulse width modulation dimming. And the first one we're going to look at is the Typhon controller by Steve's LED. So this thing costs about $45 and it has, it comes with a simple 12 volt, um, charger cord so you can power the module and it has eight pins on the side. The top four are for five volt dimming and the bottom are for 10 volt. Depending on the driver that you have, you're going to have either a zero to 10 or a zero to five volt dimming lead. This particular one's zero to 10 volt. So you can see you power it on and you can set some specific timers to either do a sunrise or sunset. This particular one actually has some temperature pads where you can put a temperature sensor either environmentally in the room or uh, on the heatsink itself. Um, there's really not a lot to talk about here because it's just two wires that you plug in and um, that's it. You set it up like you would any standard timer. So um, this would be a pretty good option for you people that have multiple drivers, maybe in multiple rooms, and you want to kind of synchronize and, and control everything. Um, or people that have multiple channels of LED, like a uh, red channel or blue channel or um, far red or ultraviolet, you know, you can control four different channels with one dimmer. So um, 
for the people that want a little bit more control or the ultimate control, check out one of these. Um, there's another model called the Storm Controller that's by Rapid LED um, that you can check out as well. So that's about it, guys. This wraps up the DIY LED series. Um, this video was pretty simple, not quite as in-depth as some of the others. I just basically wanted to show you all these different products and components for you to use in your build. Um, so go ahead and like the video, comment, subscribe if you want to see more cool LED stuff. Now that we wrapped up with the basics, I can move into some more intermediate to advanced techniques, and we'll do some grow hacks too. You know, we'll do take some some lights and uh, retrofit them, and do some conversions, and you know, outfit them with different LEDs and multiple colors and stuff like that. So I hope you enjoyed the series, guys, and uh, please comment if you have any questions, and I'll see you on the next video.